Yo, 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 what's going on, world? This your boy Najee from Cigar Talk. And today I got a very special guest, man, seated to my right. Hey, this is one of the hottest upcoming boxes in the game. I got my man, the businessman, Keyshawn Davis. Uh, what's, what's up, up man? brother? Chilling, man. You How already are you, know. man? You got the Olympic sweatsuit on. My boy looking good, man. <laughs> yeah, man. This is actually the jacket I wore on the podium. You know oh, yeah? What I'm when you so, won? Yeah. Damn. For sure. We're not, we're not. Uh, silver. S- silver. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still a medal. <laughs> Silver. How did you feel? All right, when you won the silver, how did you feel though? Was you still happy? Like, cause that's an accomplishment still, bro. Yeah, I mean, sure. It was in the moment when I won the silver, I, I lost at that time. Yeah. So it was just like, keep your head up. Don't show the world how you truly feel. Just keep your head up and show that this still is an accomplishment yeah. for the ones that's looking back at home. And um, I, I did that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was funny because there was like, when you get on the podium, don't hold up the number one and don't hold up nothing. Uh, like they might find you. If you go back and look at pictures, I'm holding up that DB3. Mm, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, it is what it is. You gotta rep your shit. I for like sure. that. For nah, sure. for sure. I mean, obviously, you know, big moment coming up too is about two weeks. Um, fighting Jose Pedraza on the Tiafimo card. Uh, it's your biggest fight, man. This the, this the one that's like to me, you know, I've been watching your, your fights, you know, for a while. And this is the one that's like to cross over to the next one. This is that one. Do you yeah. feel like, does that come with pressure for you? Do you feel differently, like, because this moment is bigger than the past one? Uh, Yeah, for sure, pressure. Definitely feel pressure. Um, just like in the Olympics, I felt the most pressure in my career. And um, I could say professionally, this is the first time that I felt pressure, yeah. honestly. And um, <clears throat> I feel like when I do feel pressure, I just step up to, to higher performances. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like in the Olympics, I was stopping guys. I was giving guys eight cows back to back. And me and my finals, in the finals, that fight lived up to be the most exciting fight in the right. Olympics. You That's know what I'm saying? Fact. So I just feel like me, man, every time there's pressure on the line, I just step it up to another level. And um, shoot, here we go. Yeah. Um, is is the way you train differently? Or is it kind of like, are you doing the same thing? Like, because the moment's bigger, have you been training in a, in a different way? Or is it like, you know, business as usual? Um, we mostly doing the same thing, but I would say I'm doing more of it. Yeah. Honestly, like, shoot, once we finish with a workout, I feel like I got to do more. Like, I probably got to put a weight vest on while I work out that time. Or when I'm running, I'm putting a weight vest on. Right. Or uh, I'm, I'm doing more swimming workouts. You know what I'm saying? Like, we doing the same regiments, but I'm doing more of it for right. sure. Right, right, right. Um, is it a concern that, you know, Pedraza's been at a 40 for, like, I feel like, you know, mostly, like, he's been at 40 his last few fights. Um, now that he's coming down and a bigger guy, like, you know, does, mm-hmm. do you feel like that proposes any challenges? Are you like, damn, like this nigga might be a little big come fight night or? Uh, honestly, not yet. Albright, my last fight, he was for that 140 before. Okay. And he came down for me at 35. Yeah. Uh, shit, honestly, I done sparred Terrence Crawford. <laughs> so Took a- punches from <laughs> that man, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I done sparred Richard Torres before. He's a super, he's a heavyweight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So size. You sparred Torres? I sparred Torres what? before. Actually, I sparred the entire Olympic team heavyweights at Damn. one point in time. Because at one point in time, I guess I was just doing too much you for the people my size. So yeah. the coach was like, bro, you got to spar these heavyweights, bro. Damn. <laughs> Pull up to like Big Baby all of them. I sparred Big Baby before Damn. when he was on the team with us, for sure. How different is like heavyweight power from the Oh, it's different. Like Richard, he- Richard cracked me one time. Oh, yeah? And he jumped on me. Oh, nah. This like, nigga, Richard is like what it is. Really, like, yeah, all his fights is all knockouts. He yeah. just, he stopped the, uh, get that dude named Harper, Curtis Harper, I think. Um, yeah. His last fight. So he really one of them niggas, like, once he hurts you, he go, like, he yes. jumped on it? Yes. Like, and he <laughs> don't know how to, we supposed to be, like, working and stuff, but Richard is not that tight. He right. don't know how to work with you. You know right. what I'm saying? So, and it was one point in time when me and Richard was, like, beefing outside of the race. So I'm like... I'm gonna spar this nigga. I'm gonna show this nigga. I don't give a fuck about this nigga. Right, right. So I get it there. We fighting, bro. You know what I'm saying? So size just never meant nothing to me. Like, you you a man, I'm a man. What's up, nigga? Nigga, hey, why you beefing with heavyweights, bro? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Keep, bro. Like, I don't spar. I don't spar. Yeah. I don't spar outside my weight class no more. Yeah, this right. is like 147. Right. But yeah, back in the day, I was a little, little nuts. Nah, for sure. Um, let's talk about the Nair Albright fight, right? Because um, I'll say that was your, I mean, outside looking in, that was the toughest fight it looked like, which. Um, mm-hmm. He a veteran though. He's he's like a tough veteran. I don't know if he's super skilled, but he's like a, you know, there's certain guys that's just the rugged, tough type yeah. of guys. I think he's one of those. Do you feel like was that your hardest performance to you? 
Uh, I think he was my best opponent. I can say that yeah. for so far. I think yeah. he was definitely my best performer. Performance. He was. He was lengthy. Yeah, yeah, for he sure. was crafty. Yeah. He had speed. Um, he was quick. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he got a lot of attributes that Pedraza used to have. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I think more so just getting into a fight with Pedraza. This fight is just more so of the name itself than yeah. actually the fight. Because I'm honestly, when I was in there fighting that year, I'm like. Damn, this boy can actually fight a little bit. Yeah, like, he can fight, and people didn't realize that until I was fighting him. Mm, <laughs> you right, you right. know what I'm saying? Sometimes it takes a nigga that you know can fight for you to be like, oh, you know what? He this is actually can fight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what it was, cuz yeah. low cat. That's what it was. So I feel yeah. like that fight for real, like it definitely got me mentally ready for this upcoming one for sure. I could see that. You know what? I thought it was a a good learning experience for you, and there was a point where I feel like you heard him, mm -hmm. and um. But he still kept going. Like, he, he ain't, like, I feel like every other guy I seen you hurt, they was, you know, they hurt and now they ready to give up. But he yeah. was hurt and was still wanting to fight. Did yeah. you feel that energy in the ring? Like, oh, I hurt this nigga, but he's still, like, No, nah, for sure. For sure. I, I felt it. Yeah. And um, the second time when I heard him, that's when he came back and, and hit me. Yeah. And niggas thought I was hurt. Right. I was like, nah, it's just a good shot. But, yeah, I heard him twice in that fight. I couldn't get him up out of there because his just, his resilience. Yeah. I think I was just, not. Nah, I think I was promoting the fight so much yeah. before the fight. It just, I think he had it back in his head, like, I don't care what happens, this dude is not gonna stop me. Mm. Like, I'm not getting stopped in here. Like, right. I think he just had that resilience in him, and um, it, it showed, you know yeah. what I'm saying? He landed the one punch. I mean, that was the big punch that everybody was like, oh, shit. Like, cause you know what it is, when somebody that doesn't really get hit, and we the first time we <laughs> see you get hit, it's just a big deal, right? Like, yeah. in retrospect, it's not a big deal, cause you, you know, you didn't, Buckle, you ain't nothing really happened. Yeah. But just because you got hit, it was like in that moment, was it like, was it one of them ones that was like, was you dazed? Was it like you ate it? Like, what was the vibes when that happened? It was like, literally, this is what happened. I'm getting on him. Boom. Oh shit, let me hold him. Right. Cause I'm already knowing soon as motherfucker get hit, Man, and they gonna start going, going he gonna start going crazy. <laughs> so me yeah. being smart, let me hold this little motherfucker. All right. Get my head back right, and then I'm gonna get back on his ass. You right. know what I'm saying? Luckily, the bell rung, because right. I was gonna get back on his ass, but right. the bell rung, and that was that. That's a veteran move, though. Hold him and do what you gotta do. Veteran move. I'm not about to get hit and then just allow him to throw hella punches after that. Now I gotta play hella defense. Right. No, boom on. Right. Mm. Okay, back to what I need to do. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. <laughs> um, nah, I'm, I'm excited for this Pedraza fight. Like I said, it's, it's definitely. Um, you know, a step up. Are you? Do you watch film of, of your opponents? Like, is that something like you know you you know you go in to watch all of his other fights, Tank or whatever, Lomachenko, you know whoever you watching of who he's fought? I'm a student of the game. Yeah, I'm watching I'm watching film for sure, yeah. for sure. Okay. Um, obviously, we, we got to talk about the suspension. You know what I'm saying? Um, got caught up with the wig, and um, what was that for you? Cause like I was a nigga like I. I just stopped smoking weed last year, right? I smoked weed for 10 years straight. Like, yeah, you know, nigga. <laughs> Congratulations. Like, listen, listen. Because for me, I was smoking for so long, but like, I was a nigga that, like, wake up, roll up. Like, before I do anything, roll up. I was on that type of time. And um, I think it was just, I was smoking for so long in, in New York. We used Graba, you feel me? So I had the Graba or the Woods. And um, I don't know, it just started mm -hmm. fucking with me for like, like my diet. I couldn't eat unless I was high, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, I know for me, when it getting off, it was, you know, it was hard for me. But I, but I was using weed because one is like I liked it, but two, like I would mentally, it would do shit for me mentally. Like I could think in a different way. I could listen to music in a different way. Like with yeah. you, what, what was it for you with the weed? Like was it just like you using it because you're a fighter and it helps your body relax, or was it just like you like it? What, what was it for you? It was my mental health. Yeah, I've been through serious mental health. Yep. Um, Back then, when before I was even on the team, um, I used to do things to harm myself. Yeah. I went to the mental home. Um, I was on medication for mental health yeah. daily. And just throughout th that process, I was still smoking. You know what I'm saying? Through the mental home. Once I got out, once I got out the mental home, it was Halloween. First thing I did was smoke mm -hmm. on the medication. Mm -hmm. The doctor said I should at least be on the medication for about a year, eight months. I only, it only took me about four months yeah. to get off it, but I was still smoking through the process. 
got on the team smoking. Like every like I was smoking yeah. to really like whew, balance up. You know what I'm saying? So it really just started like back then with my mental health all the way into to now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I really had to, you know, <clears throat> reflect on myself and, and ask God, really seek out God to help me with this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um I'm overcoming it yeah. right now as we speak. Um, and shoot, ever since I did put the weed down, I've been a way better person, man. Yeah. And my coaches seeing it, they saying I got way more energy. Even people at the UFC facility that I train at, they like, I don't know, Keyshawn, there's just something different about you at this camp that you, right. you just, I feel like you just take it as more serious. Yeah. And um, like I said, I had to ask God and reflect on myself to, to really overcome that, that addiction. Yeah, for sure. Um, I definitely want to talk about the mental health piece. I know, just lastly, in the weed part, because uh, when I stopped, nigga, that first two weeks, that first two, three weeks, boy, what? I, was, I ain't going to lie. That shit was like, I was, it was irking me. Like, yeah. just every little thing, like, damn, man, I need this. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you feel like that? Was it hard for you at just, in terms of just dropping it, or it was cool? Like, once you dropped it, you was good. That's how I know God real. Like, it was times where I used to fast with my girl, yeah. and then... Like a three day fast, she like, come on, let's just go on a three day fast without you smoking. Yeah. And I was like, all right, bet. Like, I can do that. I can three days without smoking. All right, bet. Because right. I was like you, wake up, smoke, yeah. smoke, train, train, smoke. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm like, bet, I'm gonna just go on a three day fast. Like, forget it. Like, I'm, I'm God believing, I'm God fearing. I know I can do this. Mm -hmm. So the whole three days, I'm like, like you, like, yeah. dang, I need to smoke. Right. The third day, like, boom, I did it. So the fourth day come, like, I smoking and stuff. And then it's, it was just like, Keyshawn, you still got this fight coming up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, it wasn't until I made a promise to God mm. that I was going to stop smoking. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't follow honor, through with yeah, that promise. Yeah, I didn't yeah, honor yeah, that yeah. promise, right? Right. The days go past. I'm like, bro, something don't feel right. Like, what's going on? Long yeah. story short, I'm like, yo, I just lied to God. The first mm. chance I got to do, I started smoking. Right. I repented. I really felt bad, like, dang, I really did this. And honestly, after I did that, God took my urge away. Mm. So it was like, I had an in in encounter with God, honestly. Wow. And ever since that day, I repented, I really felt bad, I never had the urge again. Even, damn, that's what's no up, cap. man. That's what's up. Tell me, so, you, I mean, you talked about the mental health, and I think that's a super um, important topic, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people where we from go through those types of things and don't really know one is like how to handle it and two even know what it is, right? Niggas just wilding out. Like, and you think know that's what I'm the norm. And think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. um, what was it for you that when you, you know, you said you checked into a mental facility even trying to, you know, figure out all of these things. What was the point that you realized it was something that needed to be addressed? For my mental health? Yeah. Um, I would say when I was in, I was in 12th grade, I moved from my hometown, from Norfolk to Alexandria, yeah. and honestly, I was doing doing things, harming myself through that process. From Norfolk to Alexandria, is the mental health stayed with me. But what was it about that time that was? Yeah, what was it about? It was really the pressure for me. Mm. At that time, I, my brother left boxing. Yeah, your oldest. My brother. grandma died. Yeah, I'm having dreams about her. I couldn't really overcome that. Um. My big brother that was supposed to be like me in this position, like he was going to go to the Olympics, he was going to do all that. Yeah. Kelvin stopped boxing. My little brother looking at me like, bro, what the hell are we going to do? Right. My mama looking like, Keyshawn, are you sure you want to box? Like it was just a lot of pressure for me. Like, damn, if I stop boxing right now, if I just decide to do what my brother did, Kelvin, it wouldn't be none of this right now. Mm. Literally, mm. like for real. Yeah. I felt that in that moment. Yeah. I felt I had to carry the torch, and I felt that I wasn't ready for that. Right. So I didn't know how to deal with that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So the, the pressure just got to me, just the anxiety started getting to me. <clears throat> um, the person I, I used to fall back on had died. I ain't have nobody. And I just felt like I just had to carry the torch. And I was physically, but I wasn't carrying it mentally. Mm. Yeah. Well, what, what kind of things did you learn or, like, what helped you overcome it? Like, when you're going through all of that and addressing the mental health, was there anything that helped you, like, realize, like, 
you could get out of that space? My family, for sure. Starting with my sister, Shanice, Shanice Davis. When I moved to Alexandria, I moved with my sister, my yeah. little brother. I left my mama. And um, Shanice was just peeping the little things, like he's not himself. Mm. Um, long story short, my counselor figured out what was really wrong with me. Uh, Miss Terry, shout out Miss Terry. Yeah. And um, my counselor went to my sister Shanice, and Shanice basically just took it on from there. Mm. You know, told my mother, told my other sister. Shout out to sis, though, for holding you down. For like sure, that, Shanice, yeah. for sure. Like, yeah. and my other sister, you know, I got to put her in it. Chantel, you know, we we are God fearing family, but she is like God fearing. Yeah. Like, she's the one like that always makes sure she keeps us on track. So, I know once she found that out about me, she was praying asking God for, for a direction and stuff like that. And yeah, both of my sisters definitely just played a big part of yeah. me just, you know, overcoming <clears throat> that mental health. Yeah. And then, you know, me being in that mental facility, you know, my family visiting me. Right, right. Shout out Stax, you know, uh, Tyler, you know, he came in there. He was like, he's like, he's like a brother from another mother with us. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So my family definitely like, you know, got me through that phase for sure. Nah, that's what's up. Um, yo, you know what? I was kind of looking at it like the whole weed shit was a blessing in disguise, low key, because um, Bomat got locked up around at that time. So I'm like, damn, it, was you prepared to <laughs> fight without him? Was that was that the vibe? Like, all right, I'm gonna have to just go do it without my head trainer. Uh, I mean, I bro, I love to fight, bro. I'm prepared, and when it comes to boxing and fighting, yeah. shit, on the street, I'm prepared to fight. Period. Right. I know how to get myself in shape. I know what I need to do mentally to, to to get ready for a fight. You know what I'm saying? It's just this team, this BNB team, Bomack and Coach Red, Coach Rendell, Coach Sawu, this team that I have is just so powerful. They're going to take me to the next level. Mm. But if you just talk about me as an individual, I know what I need to do to get ready for a fight. Yeah. So I was prepared to fight without Bomack. Okay. What did he What did he say to you? Like, all right, when he came home and all that shit, did you ask the nigga, like, nigga, what was it like? Like, London jail? Like, you feel me? Because I know, you know, I know it's little shit here or whatever, but, like, yeah. what did he say about that whole experience out there? Yeah, the, um, shoot, the first time I see Bo when he got out of jail, I think it was, yeah, it was the night before I fought. Yeah. No cap. It was literally the night before I fought. I I wasn't supposed to be up around this time, honestly. It was probably like 11 o'clock. I'm supposed to be in my bed chilling. I go down to the hotel lobby and I see Bomek. I'm like, oh shit, my <laughs> nigga, what's up, bro? Right. Like, I knew he was there, but it was my first time seeing him. Right. So I wasn't really asking him questions about jail yeah, for real, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I know he getting thousands of questions. Sure. He just was, uh, I was just happy seeing him for real. But as we time went on, he told us he was opening up about it. He was just like, man, they was loving him in that joint. Yeah. Like he had everybody laughing right. per usual, yeah. you know what I'm saying? He was just like, he was just ready to get up out that jump. Right. But he was like, man, they was loving him. Like the guards, the inmates, everybody was loving him in that jump. So. Yeah, nah, that's what's up, man. Um, <laughs> nah, for sure. You know what? Obviously, I'm, I'm looking, you know, I don't want to look to, you know, as they always say, fighters, you can't look past your opponent, you know, there's a, a serious fight. Um, but you know the one that everybody be talking about. It's two niggas for you that everybody talk about. I say the first one is Andy Cruz. That's the one that people are like, yo, we waiting for that. We seeing that. Um, mm -hmm. I saw his last fight. He called, he, you know what I mean? He tried to sun you on the press conference. You seen that? He said, he's like, oh, yeah, it's my oldest son, da, da, da. Um, when you see shit like that, do it make you be like, all right, I want this fight, or you just want some, like, whatever? I mean, yeah, out of everybody out for, I definitely want to fight him. Yeah. Um, it's a fun fight for the fans. Yeah. Um, it's going to be easy selling that fight, honestly. Yeah. And, um, I mean, who wouldn't want a rematch from out of the Olympics? Like, sure. That's a beautiful fight. And then just off the fact of him talking like that, yeah, I want to fuck him up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I, I know, like, in amateurs, everybody, you know, we fighting under a system. You can't really do what you want to do as an amateur, mm -hmm. just how you perform. So now that we in a grown man's ring, you know what I'm saying? We're going to see who the sun is. Yeah, for sure. Because, I mean... Amateur system and pros is two different worlds. Like, it ain't even... So, I, I don't personally... Me personally, I don't really count, you know, what happened to him. It's like, Danny Garcia beat Bud. It's what a Danny <laughs> for today. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Any man. point in the pros. So, I don't, I don't really count amateurs. But um, I guess because of that, do you... Because of that, you know, the history, do you feel like you got a chip on your shoulder with him? Is it like a chip or is it just... Do you look at him like everybody else? Or is it a chip on your shoulder with him? 
he really like everybody else. Yeah. Like, do you feel like he that I mean, nigga though? Like, cause he, you know, what I'm saying they hyping him and he talking like, you know, what I'm saying like, yo, do I know. feel like he that nigga? Yeah. Hell no. Nah. Don't nobody know Andy Cruz for real, for real. Why do yeah. you know Andy Cruz? Uh, just cause I'm a boxing nigga, you know. I look, I look it up. You know what I mean? I seen y'all fight in the. Uh, Thank you. Olympics. Everybody know Andy Cruz because of who? Mm. Come on, like let's be realistic here. Like everybody know Andy Cruz because we was the big fight in the amateurs. We right. was the big woody woody woo. But when you talk about people being in this level, people being known is fucking. Put him in the ring with Pedraza right now. Put him in the ring with shit with me right now. Mm. I got on live. Well, Eddie Hearns got on my live. Yeah, I saw that. I was gonna ask you that. Talking about his fight that I didn't even watch. Right. And he was saying, "I'm like, look, Eddie Hearns, I ain't even watch this shit. But what's up? What you got to say? <laughs> right. I'm high on that live. Yeah. That's why I kept saying you caught me off guard. Right. I don't right. see if niggas really kept, catch. I was right. high as hell. I ain't even know what to say for real. For real. I'm be right. real. We be honest here, right? Yeah, be honest. Keep it high as hell on that live. So he talk all this Eddie Cruz stuff. You know what I say? Okay, set it up. Let's, let's fight this, this yeah, year. Yeah, he said it. This, yeah, he was like, set it up. He was like, uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be a great... Let's set it up. Right. Like, I'm not with all this talking. He keep calling me his son. Okay, let's yeah. fight this year. I'm your son. Right. Let's make it happen. Like, right, right. for the fans, let's make it the best two out of three. We fought four times, right? Let's fight four times in the fucking pros. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. niggas just be doing a lot of talking and just trying to build their name off of my name. Yeah. And I had to sit back and actually realize that shit. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But... Niggas know, T.O. just did this interview. He walked up to me, he said, yeah, you one of the real fighters that fight anybody. I will fight anybody yeah. right now. Right. The reason why I'm fighting Pedraza at 9-0 and right now, I don't have to fight Pedraza. Right. I really fucking don't. Yeah, I could have said, nah, I'm going I'm to I'm wait. I don't want to fight him right now, just like everybody else do. Yeah. But we're not going to put no nails and no fingers. But I'm not one of those fighters. Give me Pedraza, I will whoop his ass. Right. Right. Now, nah, respect. I mean, respect to taking that fight. Like you said, you ain't have. That's not a fight you have to take right now, especially being nine and zero. Really, he's supposed to be ten, but not you know being nine and zero. I take nine and zero though. Sounds yeah. better. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other one, you know, the other person who they want. I ain't gonna lie. I want this. The Andy Cruz shit could wait for me. Floyd Schofield, little kid Austin nigga. I ain't gonna lie. I want to see that kid. I want to see that fight. Why? Cause I think I think one one stylistically, I think it's interesting because he's like a um. He kind of like a Sean Porter-ish style. I don't think he's not as polished as Porter, but just his style is very rugged and get in there and you know what I'm saying? What kind of style you, a boxer. I have. you you like a you a boxer puncher, you know what I'm saying? So you use jab, you use your distance, you creative with your combinations, you're patient. I think that's the main thing I see from you is patient. Sometimes too patient to me, but your patience is your main attribute to me that I never really seen nobody speed you up yet. There's certain fighters that when they do that, now you moving fast because they moving fast. And I haven't seen nobody be able to do that to you. Just really push me. Yeah, yeah, to make like, you do something out of your element. Like So you feel like he would be the one? It's possible. It's possible. Do you feel like he would be the one? I don't know if he could beat you, but I think he, I, I think he could pose enough that it would have to make you do something out Different. of your comfort zone. Okay. I think everybody that you fought so far is even Nair, you still was able to be comfortable in what do you, you know, doing. Do you know why? You tell me why. It's the IQ level, sir. Mm. It's IQ. I can get it with any old, you're going to see it with Pedraza. I can get it with any fighter. Yeah. I'm going to stoop them down. I'm two steps ahead of every single fighter I fight. The reason why I can go in there and fight with a fucking stomach ache and still beat these guys. Mm. I'll be two steps ahead of these fighters. And I had to sit back and think, like, and watch my fights, like, damn, I can't really be too mad at myself because when I'm in there, I really be comfortable. Yeah. Like you, you said, ain't hey, nobody in there that yeah. really opposed a threat yet. Yeah. The reason why I took this fight at 9 and 0 with Pedraza cuz I'm trying to fight. I'm trying to Right. I'm trying to get out my element. Right. I'm trying to show how tough I am. Just like when Nick dude caught me that big shot. Yeah. Okay, niggas get hit. So right. what? Y'all yeah. see ain't shit that happen. That's what I'm saying. You Even know that what I'm saying? didn't rattle you to where you had to move differently than where you comfortable at. Because why? You know what I'm saying? IQ. What yeah, did I do IQ. after yeah. that? I see that. Yeah. Did what I was supposed to do. You did. Held them right up, and then you went back to boxing right after that. That's a fact. It's the IQ, man. Yeah. And people overlook that. And but it's cool because people hold me at high pedestals and shit, yeah. which they supposed to yeah. keep doing that because I'm just gonna keep showing them, you know, why I'm here. Yeah. It's so early. 
Um, I think the other thing that would be fun about that is one of the things I actually like about you is you make the press conferences lit. <laughs> I go lie. Like as a fan that's just a boxing, I like niggas that could just make the press conference fun too. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you always wilding in the press conference, yeah. which makes it um a lot of fun. So I just feel like you and his dad in the press conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know <laughs> so yeah I be man, I just like I I like, you know, promoting the fight and talking a little shit, but also not disrespecting the fighter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. I'm not a person that's just going out there and just gonna disrespect. That's that's not me. That's not my character at all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I feel like Naya was just taking a lot of things I was saying personally. Right. It was a lot of things off camera. I was like, Oh nah, bro! Like it's like you cool for real. Like I'm just promoting the fight, bro. Like right. we just woo do woo do woo. Right. His coach was like, cause his coach is talking hella shit. I'm yeah. like, he old too. I'm right. like, I'm like chill, pops. Like it's all good. Like <laughs> yeah. it's just, I'm just promoting the fight, sir. Like it's all good. You know what I'm saying? So, like that's just me. Like I just like having fun and yeah. you know respecting the fighters at the end of the day. Is that a conscious thing for you? Like you walked into the sport being like. I'm gonna make sure I'm doing putting on in the press conferences, or is it just like that's just how you are? Like I interviewed A B and he was like, I was like, nigga, you was wilding, bro. He was like, yeah. nah, this is just how I am. I'm not yeah. I didn't do nothing outside of what I'm doing. Is that you? Like you just like that, or is it like you went in saying, like, nah, I'm about to put on? I mean, if you I mean, that's just me, man. You go back and watch my lives. When I'm an amateur, I'm wilding. It just yeah. didn't mean that much because I'm fighting amateur guys. Right. Now I'm pro. It, I'm talking shit to, 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 to people that's world champions. I ain't gonna mention them. Right. People that's undisputed champions. Now yeah. it means a lot. Yeah. That's just me. I'm gonna do it on live. I'm gonna do it with you. Yeah. Press conferences. As long as I feel like I'm not disrespecting the fighter, then I mean, what can a fighter say? If you get mad at it, fuck it. Fight me. Right. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm not disrespecting you, then what can you say? Like, right. talk shit back. Yeah, right. Like, or fight me. Like, it's yeah. one of the two. So. I don't know. That's just me, bro. That's yeah. just me. Um, I want to ask you about DB3, man. Um, I know that's been an important thing to you just as far as, you know, your brand, your family, what you promote. And I like the, actually, I like the tweet. Niggas try to make it like, oh, when you said something about like, you know, I'm not under Shakur. Like, I'm, I'm DB3. Like, you know, you're putting on for your own thing. I respected that. Um, what does that mean to you? Like, you know, obviously them your brothers and y'all grew up fighting, but like, what's the meaning behind the whole thing? Uh, DB3 stands for Davis Brothers. And it's three of us. Um, I'm the middle brother. Yeah. I have a younger brother, the older brother. Kelvin Davis, he signed with me the day I signed with top rank in ESPN. Kelvin is right now ranked number 10. Right now, uh, he is 10 and 0 with six knockouts. Keon Davis right now is going to, to the Olympics. To the Olympics. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's really it's, it's a brand, our brand. Right. Kelvin, our oldest brother, came up with the idea before he even got back into boxing. Mm. And that's honestly what made him get into boxing. Keon said, look, bro, honestly, it can't really be DB3 if you ain't boxing. Mm. Man, Kelvin had to think about it. And he was like, man, he was working like a, he was working like a, elect he was an electrician. Yeah. He, was, he had a decent job, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he ain't struggling. But he like, man, Keon, you right. Like, why not? I'm only, at the time, 21 years old. Might as well just get this a second chance. And lo and behold, this man ranked number 10 right now wow. in, in, in the world, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And Keon going to the Olympics, man, I feel like this year, because of Keon going to win a medal, a gold medal at the Olympics, he's going to raise our brand to the roof. Yeah. It's going to be undeniable that the Davis brothers are in boxing. It's going to be a second brother going to the Olympics and winning a, a gold medal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's going to be major for us, our brand. And after Keon do that, man, I feel like it's the sky's the limit for him yep. and just our brand itself. I, I think when you said earlier that, you know, your brother was the focal point at the time of just boxing and being the one to lead it off, did you ever feel like you was going to be the guy? Because now, if, when we know DB3 is because of you, right? Like, no, you know, not, yeah, for not sure, for sure. the brothers, for sure. saying, but the reason we know of that is because of what you're doing. Did you ever know that you was going to be the one leading the charge? Did you ever feel like that? Yeah, that's when the, all the, the pressure started hitting, when I knew I had to be the one yeah. to lead uh, when I was 17 years old. I knew when Kelvin left boxing, I knew I had to be the leader. But uh, once Kelvin created the DB3 brand, it was like my first year on Team USA. So I was making a name, 
Keyshawn Davis wasn't set yet in boxing. I was making the name. Yep. So when Kelvin came up with that idea, us knowing us, we know eventually we all gonna be there, but at the time, I'm the name. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna be the one to put it in people's face. I'm gonna be the influencer behind DB3 and let people know it's DB3, it's not Keyshawn. Right. And if people gonna be asking, what's DB3? Boom, got your attention. Right. It's three of us, <laughs> yeah. it's not just me. So I was just the one to really just put it in people's face. And Kelvin and Keyshawn did their thing, but like you said, I was the, the one at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, that's exactly what I did. Who was the brother at the time that was like, you know, when y'all all get into y'all shit, who the nigga that was whooping ass though? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all brothers, it's three of y'all. Like, who was the one that was really, like, you know what I'm saying? When it's just closed doors, it's just us three getting into it. When we was... <laughs> hey, Key on the man. Yeah. Key on the man. Yeah. Then that, that boy, he walk around like at 160, 168. That man, 6'3", 6'4". Mm. Yeah, he is tall. Man, can't nobody fuck with Keon, man. Yeah. Can't nobody fuck with Keon. And I ain't going to say too much. Y'all just going to see. Right. If I keep saying he's going to Olympics, he's going to win a gold. I'm not just saying it to be saying it. Bro, Keon is the man. Keon been around Olympic boxing since 2016. No cap. Shakur, he been around since 2016 when Shakur is going to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Alongside my journey going to the Olympics. Right. That was his turn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he done seen it all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Keon's the Keon. man. Okay, that's what's up. Um, tell me about the uh, the stomach issues. You mentioned that earlier. The first time I heard that was with Tim Bradley said that on the commentary. I didn't. I didn't ever heard that. I didn't know that. What? What? Like, what is that? What's What's the stomach issue? Like, when did that start for you? It started when my fourth fight, my fourth professional fight. It started, and how it started? Literally, I was training for the fight. It was, I was supposed to fight like March 23rd under the Egg Belanga card in the Hulu theater. Yeah. And I literally ate some spaghetti. <laughs> mm. All that acid, all the tomato stuff, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I guess it was a sit right in my stomach. And that shit started. Like, it felt like ulcers. It mm. felt like, I tell my family all the time, like, once I first was throwing up and couldn't control my throw up and just, I was, I was like, God, if this the time, just, just do it. Yeah. Just take me. Mm. Uh, it was that, it was that bad. bad. What? I'm like, God, like, just, just take me. This yeah. hurts. Like, I'm, I can't take it no more type shit. Like, for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, the whole camp just worried about me. Yeah. I go to the hospital. They send me home the same night without an answer, which is like some... Damn. Yeah, for real. Like, <laughs> just like some bullshit medicine that help calm my stomach down. Give me some IV to put fluids back in me, but it's not really solving the issue. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, man, when that first happened, man, I, shit, whew, Damn. it was tough for sure. It's crazy. I ate some bad nachos one time, nigga. <laughs> Had me what? Oh my, <laughs> bro, my stomach was a little crazy. Niggas some nachos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was, that's the only time. But hold up, was was it a thing that you knew? Like at that point, was it like a dietary thing? Like I got to change my diet, or is this something like? Like, what was the reason that was kind of causing? <laughs> it's funny. So, we done changed the diet. We done drinking more water. We done stopped drinking coffee. We done did all that, except for one thing we didn't stop doing. Mmm. All the way up to now, y'all bright fight. I never stopped smoking. Yeah. <laughs> I was just talking to my mother about this. She like, yeah, I remember when they was telling you you need to change your diet and you do all this and that. And she like, I'm just sitting back like, hmm, it's really weed, but I ain't gonna say nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. She's right. So you've been good ever since? Like, you feel feel good? Man, I was winning off my talent and my, I was winning off my talent and my will to win, my resilience to, I'm not looking bad on camera. Yeah. Number one, right. number, I don't think about losing, <laughs> for real. Yeah. So, that was really what it is. I went off talent and my resilience. Like, that's just what it is, for real. I just had to put that down, man. Yeah, nah, for sure. A whole for other sure. fighter. Nah, I respect it. Um, 
Tell me about uh, Floyd. I seen you in the gym with Floyd. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Hit the pads. Like, I feel like for every boxer that get the chance to really like <laughs> do that with Floyd, that's a moment. Like, that's Floyd. You nah, me? for sure. What, what did you pick up from him in those moments? Like, you know, however brief it may have been, like, what did you get from that experience? Floyd is real. He ain't telling you nothing fake. He's not being fake. Floyd gonna get to you straight, clean cut, forward. I was, he was there when I sparred a couple of times. And my coach, Rendell, he say to this day, man, he feel like that's one of my best sparrings when Floyd was there coaching me. Because mm. I watched Floyd, like, I mimic Floyd yeah. for sure. And then in the amateurs, I was mimicking Shakur because he was just a guy that just never got hit. So I'm like, okay, he did that in amateurs. Right. I'm gonna mimic that for amateurs, and I'm gonna mimic Floyd. Floyd I just try to get the yeah, best, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Whoever doing it right. Let's, you feel yeah. what I'm saying? That's yeah. literally what it was. So yeah. Floyd, man, shit. Actually working with him outside of just me watching him on YouTube, bro, that's, that joke was crazy. Really a dream come true. Yeah. Like, And I know he's keeping it real with me, so anything he's telling me, I'm, I'm taking in, I'm listening to him for sure. Right. But what type of shit did he say to you? Like, I mean, obviously y'all hitting the pads or whatever, but like, did he say anything to you that stuck out or something that you held? Like, okay. He gave me some sauce, for sure. He gave yeah. me some technical sauce, for sure. Yeah. Um, but what stuck out to me for real, the very first time I worked with him, he brought up me and my brothers. Mm. I've been around a lot of promoters. Right. A lot of managers. A lot of interview people. Yeah. Oh, Keisha on this, Keisha on that, business man this. This man said, yeah, what about your little brother, Keon? Oh, and he's still going to limp. Oh, yeah. And Kelby, he signed with you. I'm like, oh, shit. Wow. It's so like, know, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Right. It's like, I probably could say the first time. Right. Somebody outside of our family is mentioning DB3. Like, right. and it's Floyd. You know what I'm saying? So that that's what really stuck out to me, for sure. That's what's up. Nah, I love that. I love that. Um, I was, Let's talk some boxing real quick, man. You know what I'm saying? Talk some boxing shit. Uh, you know, Terrence is your man. Yeah, yeah. But, but your man. Yeah. You know the fight niggas want to see, bro. What? Boots. You know niggas want to see boots, bro. That's what the streets, everywhere I go, that's what people, that's what they saying right now. You know what I'm saying? What you think? Obviously, that's your man. Listen, that's your man. That's home team. It don't got nothing to do with that, though. But you, hold on. You trying to say you don't think boots could, like, hang in there with Bud? Like, or beat him? What you said, hang in there at first? Yeah, all right, beat him. Do you think boots could beat him? I think any man getting in the ring got a chance of winning, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Boots is a hell of a fighter. I'm not saying puncher's chance. I'm saying, like, this is a real fight that a nigga could win. Like, anybody, like, if I get in the ring with you, you're a professional. I'm just a nigga that beat up people outside the ring before. But, like, <laughs> me fighting a professional is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, like, yeah. I have a chance to win because I yeah, can yeah, throw punches. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm saying I think Boots actually got, a like, a real chance to beat him. You do, for sure? Like honestly, yeah, yeah. I, but I can't. Like if I had to put the percentage, you know how niggas say 50-50? Yeah. I would say, I think it's fifty-five, forty-five. But damn, you think it's that close? Yeah, I think Boots really like that. So what do you think? Of, what did you think about the the Earl and Terrence fight? Oh, I won so much money. I knew he was gonna beat the shit out of Earl, and respectfully, because why I did like you Earl. know that though? Why? Well, one Styles make fights. You know what I'm saying? And I don't. I do think the car accident slowed them down some. I don't. I don't think that would have changed the outcome. I think the outcome would have still been the same. But I just think that. Errol's been, because he's so um, he's so dominant in terms of, like, he uses jab to get inside and then just start beating you up. Yeah. Like, volume. Yeah, but I yeah. knew with Bud is, like, when you lunge in with that jab, <laughs> he's going to counter the shit out of you. You're not going to be able to do that. That doesn't work on him. Yeah. So it's like, I just think that style was yeah. just... tailor-made for tailor- him. So I won, I won so much bread because everybody was like, yeah, Errol. I was like, yo, bro, yeah. you're gonna, he's going to get beat up. So I just didn't know it was going to be that bad, though. So what about... Comparison to the to the Boots and Terrence fight, what do you think? I just think one is the other thing about Bud is I think Bud is you know when you're an older fighter you could get old overnight. You know what I'm saying? Not Why do you feel that way? Cause I've just seen it. I've seen that happen to a bunch of different fighters where like. But was know, that was that Bud? No, no, no. Like I'm not, I'm not saying that it it will happen to Bud, but I'm saying if it did, this is a time that is possible. But I'm saying his boots, we be looking at like, he, he got a jab, mm-hmm. he could switch, he got power, he could counter. We have seen him get hit though, so that's the other thing. But I just think he uh, he got enough that he could push Bud in a way that I don't think 
people nobody's ever forth. done. Yeah, that nobody's had the ability to actually do. Right. I, I mean, I respect that, man. And that's a valid. That's a valid answer. You know, what I'm saying you can't. You can't. Argue I know Bun gonna be mad if he see this because I think. Mean, <laughs> I mean, nah, like, like, it's, like it's nah. He ain't gonna be mad. He gonna be mad because <laughs> he he know you ain't talking out the side of your ass. Like yeah. he know you just you just genuinely you know give me your opinion, man. And um, just me knowing. Cause I knew Boots from the amateurs and up, you know what I'm saying? Like we came up together and type shit. Yeah. Um, but me just being alongside Terrence, man, he's like, bro, Terrence different, bro. Like for real. Like, yeah. like, like Terrence is, he's different, bro. You saying that from watching it or from being in it, being in there? I, I, I done both. Yeah, but I'm, what did you, like Cole told me, he said, I learned more from Bud, like watching Bud than actually being in there. He was like, when I watch him, He's like, being in there, like, I just be having to think a lot. But he was like, when I watch him, I learn different shit. So that's why I asked you. I think it's both. For me, it's both. It's, yeah. it's both for me. Because me and, me and Shakur go back and talk about how he sparred Terrence, how I sparred Terrence type shit, and how, right. how it was. It's just like you said, styles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I would, I, I would more so think, I, when he was explaining to me, what Shakur explained to me, when they spar, it's more like a thinking game. When me and Terrence spar, it's more of a fighting game. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. Yeah, it's, it's different for me. So I just got watching him and going in the ring with him. I just can, it's, just, it's almost like the, I want to say the same because it's not, nothing is the same when you're taking punches rather than just watching. But I just know that that man is different. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I've never been in the ring with Boots. Yeah. And I'm not saying Boots ain't different or, right. or, you know, not good at all. I think it would be a good fight. But yeah. I just think, you know, Terrence. Just like he said, man, he been battle tested before. Terrence yeah. been through all the ups and downs yep. in the ring. Yep. He's the Floyd Mayweather of this generation. And Boots is more so just the up and coming, you know, yeah. potentially at 147. Could be, the, yeah. could be the Floyd Mayweather. So I, I'm going to compare it to this too. Just the magnitude of this fight, maybe Terrence is just not motivated enough. To really... No, I can see why he wouldn't do it. You know it. what I'm saying? I can see why he wouldn't do it. Because I feel like when he fought Sean Porter, that was a big fight. Like that big was that, fight. This fight not reaching that potential. Yeah. And that's Sean Porter sure. comparison to the Earl fight. Sure. You know, so like in his t point of his career, like something got to motivate this man to really be like, all right, I'm going to fight him. Yeah. And it's not going to be years down the line where he going to be, when he going to like, like he did with Earl. It's not going to be years out of the line where he be like, man, fuck this shit. We got to make it happen. Right. It's not going to be like that with yeah, Boots. Yeah. There's no history. Error was his, so I get it. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's just the motivation for him right now. Yeah, and, and, and the money, like, what, what really, at his older career, what really makes the most sense. Yeah, for, for sure. real. For sure. Um, what do you think about Devin Regis' fight? Respect the Regis, man. Um, Devin beat the shit out of Regis. Yeah, bad. That was bad. I ain't gonna lie, Devin, Devin, Devin. I knew Devin. it was gonna be bad, but I was like, man. I thought Regis was gonna be able to land something. Nah. Nah. I, I knew, I knew, I knew Devin was gonna, I thought Devin was just gonna outbox him on some Cam Bosey shit. But Devin showed that he got a little meaner in there. And that's yeah. what I seen, bottom yeah. line. Yeah. He showed he got a little meaner in there. He got, he, he grew, he grew. Some bigger nuts. Yeah, I would say. What you think about the whole rehydration thing? That became a whole thing because everybody said, "Oh, he came in at 160." Da da. Like, how you feel about rehydration clauses or just rehydrating? Like, it's part of boxing. Yeah. If, if that's rules in boxing, just like you know, you're not supposed to be smoking, and then you know, what I'm saying that's the rules of boxing. I guess that's the IBF rule. You know, what I'm saying if yeah. that's the rules of boxing, then I mean, that's just what it is. Um, shoot, if a guy is if if it ain't no rules and no hydration clause and dude can jump up to that weight, you should have put it in your contract that you should have never done it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, I mean, it's just boxing. People always gonna have something to say, but a lot of them never got in the ring before. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So fuck what they got to say. Nah, for sure. Cause shit, if if I can rehydrate up to that and I feel good at that weight, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. I gotta get in the ring. I gotta take punches. I gotta make sure I'm safe at the end of the day. Cause you're not. She's not, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So fuck what they got to say. Right. No cap. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I had to bring this one up because it was a, it was a talk for the last week, the whole uh, Africa in interview when he did the whole interview. He responded to you on Twitter the other day too. I think he said something like, 
I, I, f- I forget it. He said Keyshawn know what it is or some shit. I don't remember. He did not the, the say specific. that. Hey, am I making that up? <laughs> he am did I not it? say that. It was something like that. Like I gotta, I would have to pull up the tweet to actually make yeah. sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I know he responded to to the whole situation. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. When that happened, I mean, is it because this is the thing? It's, it's all boxing. Y'all niggas know each other. Y'all, y'all all been knowing each other for a long time. So right. most of the time, I see this stuff. I don't really feel like it ain't really nothing. Um, but with that, did you did you feel did you feel like a way in terms of like I don't really rock with him after all of that, or is it just this is just boxing? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I didn't have to respond to it though. Yeah, I didn't. I, it was it was not my business to do that. Um, I said that on other platforms too that I was wrong for responding the way that I did. Yeah. It's always a way of going about things. You know what I'm saying? And I was definitely wrong for responding with that. He was right with saying Keyshawn just needs to stay out of it. Yeah. He's right about that. But um, everything else after that, I just looked at it like, nigga, shut up, nigga. You soft as hell. Like, mm. shut the fuck up. You still showing your true colors. You soft as a bitch. Like, yeah. own up to what you said. Own up to how you was moving in the interview. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But. I ain't gonna say too much on it because I should never put myself in it in the first place. No, I respect that. I mean, I had to ask. Like, I'm not a nigga that like to start drama and all that, but because it was a public thing, I had to ask about that. For sure. um, I respect that, man. Lastly, uh, I heard you criticize Tim Bradley before. What's up with that, man? Why you like Tim Bradley? You know what? A lot of people don't like him. From what I, hear. I like Bradley. Like, I really like his commentary. Bro, Bradley. Why you don't like Bradley? Bro? Says the first thing that come to his mind, he do not think That's about like what him. comes to his head. That's why I like him. But he, I had to no, I had to go back and look at one of my old yeah. fights, right? And it wasn't because of Bradley. I was just watching my old fights, like, damn, I was sharp this fight. And this man that told me or told on the air. Man, I got Keyshawn top 10 right now, pound for pound. I even did like one of those, right? Right. Joe Testor, like, come on, Tim, he only 6-0. Right. Fast forward to nowadays, when Raymond Moore Tiger fight. Like, yeah, so that, oh, like, Raymond Moore Tiger, we want to beat me. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so what? If Raymond Moore Tiger top five, right. five pound? Like, Tim right. Bradley, what are you talking about, my yeah. nigga? You know what I'm saying? Like, he just yeah. be saying a whole bunch of unnecessary shit yeah. on air that I don't totally agree with. But hey, Tim Bradley, the one that got to live with it. Yeah, I agree with you. He, I think he just says what comes to his mind at the time. Which is <laughs> it's like, weird, though, because you're on I national like television. <laughs> like, why are you so open to doing some shit? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Like, but I still think he's a fan of yours. From how I hear him call your fights and talk about you, it seemed like I just think he just said he thought Moe was high could beat you. But everybody else would feel like he, you know. Man, I don't care who a fan. Of, I mean, I won't say that. I won't say I don't care who's a fan of me. But I just like people just to, to be keep it real. Yeah. I feel like a lot of I'm not talking just ESPN. I'm just talking in general. A lot of people be biased. I'm not just talking ESPN. I'm talking in general. Mm-hmm. A lot of people be biased in this boxing world. And when I just feel like at when you're biased, it's, it's not it's not real. Mm-hmm. Just like we were talking about. We just talked about Af- we just talk about a whole bunch of situations. Yeah. I'm gonna give you a real. Yeah. I'm just keeping it real. You know right. what I'm saying? I feel like. A lot of people just don't be keeping it real in this sport. And when it comes my time, my main events, or me being on camera face to face, like I want to talk to somebody that's keeping it real just yeah. like me, because that's, that's all I stand for. Right. I never got on live or got on Twitter and said some shit that I truly didn't mean yeah. or I'm being biased about. You know what I'm saying? I'm speaking my true feelings. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, but I'm not disrespecting nobody. Yeah, that's a fact. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like when it's not reciprocated, that I have a problem with that. Yeah, no, I get that. But you gotta show Bradley some love, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like Bradley, man. Shout out to Jeff Bradley, man. Hey, Bradley, I'm, man, I, man, Bradley, we go, I'm gonna see you when I see you, yeah, man. We can yeah. have a conversation, you know what I'm saying? He gonna be there on the 8th. Yeah, he yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm gonna be back there hyping it up. But listen, man, yo, um, nah, thank you for pulling up, man. Um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely excited to see kind of, you know, how your career continues to, to unfold from here. Last question, um, what are the goals? Like, where do you see yourself? Like, what's the, like, what you trying to get out of this whole boxing shit? I want to show that God is real, honestly. Mm. God is, like, really real. Um, i always been saying this even after my interviews, man. Uh, God got me here and God this, God that. Like, not saying it like that, but I'm saying it like I really be meaning it. Mm-hmm. And um, starting with this uh, this addiction I'm overcoming. Mm-hmm. Like, I just told you my story up here. Yeah. You know, God is really real. 
Yeah. And you know, ever since I had that encounter, you know, I just been moving different. Um, I feel like, you know, and it's, and it's showing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm up here saying, believe in God. You know what I'm saying? Cause he changed your life. For sure. Yo, Keyshawn, I appreciate your time, brother. My man, good luck on the eighth, man. Big fight. I'm looking forward to seeing things unfold for you, man. Yes, sir. Dope episode of Cigar Talk, the businessman. We out of here.